I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 11th of December 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. It is Sunday. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. It is living out in rural Sutiaba, and so this is our first full day living out here, is quite a change from what we're used to. It's actually pretty amazing how different life is in La Borio, which is walking distance away, and uh, out on the beach, which is technically still part of Sutiava in Las Pinitas, uh, and being here in Sutiava, it is just, it's entirely different. You get three, just in this small space, three very different lifestyles. Uh, and technically we're still in the city, but being here gives us a lot more of a feel of being in a quinta, which is kind of a uh, farm that has been uh, converted or made for weekend life kind of thing, living out in the country, but on an estate. And we're in a smaller space, but we do have a good sized yard that is all garden. The dogs are able to just run and run outside and have so much fun and it's all, it's quiet. You can hear the highway a little bit in the background, um, but you know, it's you can hear the cars but it's it's pretty distant it's we're not sitting right on the road or anything and mostly what we're getting is the rustling of the wind in the trees now we'll see when the rains come what it's like here but it is so beautiful and a sunny day like this in the middle of the city is a bit much you're just it's so much heat and there's not a lot of of air movement because of all the buildings, but we are far out. We have tall palm trees, we have low gardens, and when a breeze comes, we hear the rustling of the leaves and the wind just comes right through. And we're able to, because we're inside double gated, we're able to have the house pretty open and we have these really good bars. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. We have these really good bars on the windows here. And so we're able to have those windows wide open in every direction of the house. So the wind just goes right through the house and everything stays nice and cool, even in the middle of the house and the top, which I'll have to show you sometime on the inside, has an open peak, kind of like a, a church does, whereas the wind goes through, it pulls the, the air out of the house. So the hottest air in the house is rising and being swept away, which makes it natural air conditioning. So even in the house uh, already, and this is, this is we're, in the, we're in the summer season here, right? It's, it's early, so this is the mild summer, but uh, late April will be the worst but um, it, is, it is so pleasant outside here, much more pleasant than the city. And in the house, we can sit in the living room, don't need fans, don't need air conditioning. And uh, even, um, even in my office where I'm working all day, last night I had to turn on a fan because we had been moving all day. So I was really warm from all the moving. And yes, I'm sipping on cool water while I'm working today, but I don't have the fan on. I don't have air conditioning installed yet. I do have a lot of windows. I keep the door open. So there's a lot of air movement, but it's incredibly, incredibly comfortable. So this change to country living out here is amazing for us. Um, and the big thing for us is the dogs. They really need that space to run around. And this is, this is just, it's changing their lives already. They've been here for one day and they're just so noticeably happy. And, and healthy, they sleeping really well, they slept better than they slept in a year uh, last night. So that's been, that's been fantastic. Uh, since I did the video yesterday, um, last night I have a few updates just because we have new things. So we're new in the house and we did manage to get most of the food put away, but we didn't bring that much with us because we were getting really low on food intentionally because of the move. So we really don't have much to cook and our cook, our chef has not moved in yet. She is due to move in tomorrow on the 12th. We're very excited about that. Having a private chef living in the house, able to make food for us, that's going to take this whole thing to yet another level. I'm gonna talk a bit about some of these things. Now, a lot of you who are, a lot of my audience are not looking at moving to, to Nicaragua or to any place like this, um, but a number are. Um, and of those who are, many are on um, kind of retirement or austerity budgets where you're really looking to figure out how you can minimize your costs as much as possible. And uh, for some of you, this stuff won't really apply very well, but for some of us who are working here, um, there's a lot of considerations in your move that need to include uh, how staff here may help you become more productive um, or healthy or actually lower cost. And, and that's some of the stuff I think with this move to the house um, is gonna be really interesting to look at because we have a full-time uh, 50 hour a week, it's probably not that much, 46 to 48 hour a week uh, maid who does not live here. We have a full-time chef who is going to live here. Um, we have not yet gotten a gardener, but because of the extensive gardens, we have to have a part-time gardener uh, to take care of that. So we're gonna have quite a bit of staff assisting with the house and um, I think that's gonna be interesting because those numbers don't work out the way that you think they do, probably, 
and um, we really are already finding that a lot of those things end up saving us a lot of time and money, obviously a lot of time, um, but potentially quite a bit of money as well, uh, and, uh, and can, can potentially really improve the lifestyle. So considering those things all while, all, all while creating jobs and doing good things for Nicaragua. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at that more as time moves on, but I think um, that's gonna be really interesting in the future. But for us, it's really exciting. Uh, keep in mind, Dominic and I and the kids are heading to Los Estados Unidos, to the United States, on Wednesday. So we're down to the last couple days that we were here. So we're in kind of a panic to get things done um, and we needed to get into the house so that we're here and everything. It's great. So all of that was to say we don't have food or a cook in the house and no real capacity to go shopping tonight. I mean, we're tired, right? I mean, we were dead by five o'clock. Uh, by the time I recorded all my videos and started uploading and the uploads did go okay last night. Um, if you've been watching the show, you know I'm a little bit concerned about our much, much slower internet here. Um, we have an upload supposedly of 30 meg uh, and, uh, and it's Wi-Fi. And at the other house we had 70 and it was often wired. So the difference in our actual upload speeds can be pretty significant. I was worried about being able to get the videos up yesterday and they did take a lot longer, but they did okay. So that, that process seems to be working and uh, uh, we're moving forward with it. So I think things are gonna work. We still may get a second line next year so that we have you know, both failover and just more capacity so I can completely saturate one and then the others just for ad hoc things as we need it. Um, so we'll see. But at the moment that worked well. But by six o'clock when the sun went down, we were like, it was like just sit in the living room, talk a little bit and go to bed. Almost everyone was in bed by nine. Even the kids were asleep by 10. I did work until nearly midnight just because there is a lot I've got to do and I had to get the videos out, but um, that was it. By midnight, I was in bed as well and we were just zonked and the dogs were so sleepy. Clive was in bed by 10 and slept until like eight o'clock this morning. He's never done that. Um, uh, so last night we didn't have uh, food, so we ordered in. So we wanted to experiment and see how well the delivery would work, one, with a new address, and two, much farther out than we've been. Uh, so we ordered from Ugo, which is what we normally use. I had to put in the address, or actually I had Dominica do it. And uh, we ordered from Sua, uh, which everyone likes. And we got a pretty big order. Um, the kids like to get hummus from there and uh, shrimp and mushroom croquettes, which is so funny. How many people's kids order shrimp and mushroom croquettes and hummus with garlic bread to, to dip? Um, and uh, Dominica got their rigatoni pomodoro. Uh, I got their flatbread pizza, which is uh, mushrooms and gorgonzola cheese. Oh, so good. Uh, we ended up ordering enough that I noticed that the delivery was due at like 6.15. This shows how early it was. It's like, it felt like it was like really late and they might close. 6.15 it was due. Um, and then they pushed to 6.28 all of a sudden. I'm like, wow, why is it suddenly so late? When they showed up, it's because they had to get a second driver. We ordered too much food and the single driver couldn't bring it because they come on motorcycles, right? So they have the little box in the back of the motorcycle. We ordered two boxes worth of food and so they had to get a partner to bring the other part of the meal. So that was pretty funny, but it was this awesome experience because we live in a gated community. Now we told them what to do, but when they pulled up to the gate, there was a security guard waiting for them, which we hadn't thought of because it's our first night with a security guard. So they just talked to the security guard. The security guard walked over to my office called into the window because I'm sitting in the window and he's like, hey, your food's here. I'm like, well, oh, so I got up and walked out with him and I walked up to the gate. He opened the gate. I paid the drivers. Uh, we talked for a little bit. They gave me all the food and the security guard escorted me back to the house, opened the door for me and everything so I could come in. What? That's so awesome. We've never lived in a place with a security guard like that before. We did, Dominic and I long ago lived in a high rise and of course there was a security person who was at the front desk and it was kind of, it felt like being in a hotel because there was always a front desk that you could go talk to and honestly we really liked that. That feeling of there's always someone to watch, there's always someone to call the police, there's always a person to go get help, there is very comforting um, and, and it's nice that you know they're there to take deliveries or something like this, food gets delivered, there's a person there. They don't have to figure out which house we're in in the community, they can just say, oh, someone called. They'll be like, oh, we know who's here, right? Um, so that was really cool and it also reminded me that when we're here at night, we're not alone. Someone mentioned, you know, there's, there's barbed wire uh, on, the, on the walls behind me and there is, but that's just normal. Every outside wall in every community in Latin America does that. It's, just a cultural thing, right? People are afraid of people jumping the walls. It just keeps people from doing that, right? Because people would, right? It, oh, 
they're going to take your TV. If they can get over and no one's home, quite often houses are left empty, right? So it just makes it way too easy. But so here we have the advantage. We have double walls and we have active security all the time. So we forgot about that at night. When we pull up in the car, they just open the gate for us. When we go to leave, they just open the gate for us. Um, and, uh, and they're always keeping an eye out. And it's so quiet, like we can yell to the security guard from where I'm standing, for example, or from the living room or whatever. Uh, if there was an issue, we could just scream and they would hear us. Uh, that is a lot of comfort that I'd forgotten about. Um, and right now, the back of the house feels, I mean, it's still very safe. Like it's, there's so many walls and so much security and stuff, but it's, it's very dark and quiet at the back of the house right now. Um, but tomorrow, uh, our, our chef is moving in with her family and they're gonna live in the farthest casita in our estate. And so uh, in that casita, uh, it's gonna make that, instead of the back of our house being like the, the dead zone, where nothing is, it actually makes it that there's always gonna be activity because there's a family way back there. So they'll be watching TV, doing homework, uh, playing video games, whatever, and, and just liveliness going on. Um, and that adds to the safety or feeling of safety as well that you know it's not like you could sneak in from climbing over a back wall or something because there's people back there. Like there's just, we, we are spread out on the property such once they're here that there's no like dark areas. There's no like quiet areas. Right now we don't have enough people, so we, we don't fill it, um, but that's gonna change. It's gonna be really interesting. So it's just a really interesting, interesting evening that, uh, that we did that. Um, and, and so the food delivery was excellent and that gives us a lot of comfort. And the kids said, we were really worried about being able to get food here. And that was so easy and they got the food that they wanted and it just arrived without any hiccup at all. Um, and, and they don't really like to go out. You can get them to go out and they do have a good time when they do it, but in general, they're like, we just wanna stay home, we just wanna stay home. Um, and in Dominica, a lot of the time is the same. Uh, so pushing towards doing more delivery uh, instead of actually going somewhere uh, may be a really big thing. And because of the way the house is, it makes it so much nicer to hang out and eat. We have a formal dining room now. We have a much bigger kitchen. We have space to like get delivery, set it out, and then everyone can hang out in the living room or in the dining room and eat together um, when we want to and when not. We have other spaces to go, but it really makes the whole delivery and eating at home thing way more comfortable. Uh, in, the, in the house in La Barrio, we would have to put the food in the kitchen and the kitchen was so crowded, like it didn't, it made it really hard to just set down the, the delivered food. And then you had to go all through the house and be go through all these stupid locked rooms because of the dumb way the door is connected and go get the kids. It, it was like four doorways to get to Luchana to tell her that her food had arrived because you had to go into the master bedroom and then the master bedroom into the bathroom, each of these with a, with a locking door. Then the bathroom into Liesel's room, then the Liesel's room into Luchana's room to say, Luchana, your food is in the kitchen and then you have to go all those doors back. It was terrible. Here, all the rooms open up into the same central um, kind of interior atrium. And uh, so, so the kids are right across in the dining room. We can just go over, they can hear, and they can eat in the middle. Like it's just, it's, it's way more convenient while being a house twice the size. Uh, so that was, that was a good experience. So anyway, that was our first nice night in the house. Other than that, I just worked on uploading videos for you all night. Everyone else went to sleep and uh, it was a good first night already in our first say 24 hours at this point in the house, I can say we are all feeling dramatically more comfortable and more productive than we were in the old house in Labarillo. In the house in Labarillo, we also always knew it was a temporary thing. It felt like a one year thing. In fact, it kind of felt like a six month thing that we then kind of pushed to a second six months. Um, the whole side by side buildings where we had to go outside onto a major street every time we did anything was downright awful. The fact that we had to constantly lock the front doors in the middle of the day during anything was awful. That we couldn't talk over all the, the cars and the fireworks and the church bells. It just added up to like, oh, it felt like we were always, it didn't feel comfortable for us, for the way that we live. It was a beautiful house and La Barrio is great and, and being in the middle of the city has so many advantages. And, there's, and soon I'm gonna miss things like being able to just walk places quickly, um, whatever. Uh, but being here already, we can tell it is quiet it is tranquil, it is fresh, it's so cool. Like we just don't need the air conditioning, like so many things. And my office opens into the middle of the house. So every couple of minutes I'm in my office, I'm already being way more productive that I can get things done, I can help at work, and I don't have to 
go somewhere else and be so separate that just checking in with work becomes like this big deal. It's really comfortable to check in with work really quickly and then go on to other things. Um, and it makes it that I can spend so much more time with the family because I'm not really leaving work. I can just poke back and see if they need me for something or if I'm doing a video and I need to upload it. I used to have to go next door to my office, go through all these doors, all these keys, get in there, turn on the computer and wait for an upload. I couldn't leave while I was uploading or I would miss a whole bunch of work. But now I can step away, hang out and just go back, click a button and come back or whatever. So I'm wasting so much less time in doing little tasks. Um, I'm excited, very excited about this new house. It has so much potential. This is, this is gonna be a big improvement for us overall. And it's, it's definitely gonna shift our lifestyle from more downtown Leon to more at the beach because it has made the, the trip to the beach so much easier. Um, but it definitely is gonna make the just walking out to go to restaurants, that's gonna change a lot. We gotta figure out the taxi situation out here. Um, and uh, right now, Paul is driving us in all the time, but getting the car in and out here is so much easier that Paul doesn't mind doing the long drive to downtown from here compared to the short drive from Labarillo because the parking and the, the going in and out of the gate in Labarillo was so terrible, I mean, truly terrible. It was really dangerous and really hard every time. And here it is just country driving, just pull out lots of space, lots of visibility, as easy as can be. So those things are very different. All right, that is our wrap up from the day and, uh, oh, butterfly just came by, and, uh, and last night's info. We're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna go on to this uh, today's topic. But first, just remember, like and subscribe, take a moment while we're doing this, go down there, hit that subscribe button, it really makes a difference. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. That's buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Uh, that comes directly to me and, and really helps with all the expenses we have on the channel because obviously this doesn't make very much money. And uh, of course, share in social media. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, you wanna talk about what country living is like down here, what do you wanna know about it? Um, what are your, your ideas and, and what are you considering? I mean, we're certainly still in the city, so this isn't country country, but this gives a bit more of a feel of a portion of Nicaraguan living that I've certainly seen, but never have gotten to experience. Uh, and I think this is great that there's just, you know, when we think of a place like Nicaragua, it's so tempting to have such a singular view, like this is what Nicaragua is like. And people in San Juan del Sur, they picture it one way. People who are in Granada, they picture another. But pretty much, there's a couple kind of stock views of what life is like in Nicaragua. And doing this like country setting is something that Nicaraguans do and expats really don't. And I think it's a whole nother lifestyle that people are not aware of or, or very aware of that can really be wonderful um, and it's gonna be really neat to explore that and, and share that with everyone. All right, let's head to the topic. All right, today's topic for the 11th, we're gonna be talking about streaming services in Nicaragua because I have had a number of people ask me about these and it's worth noting, I guess there's a lot of questions to be had. Uh, people ask, you know, what streaming services are available? Can you get streaming services in Nicaragua? Because if you're looking at moving here or digital nomadry or just being here long term, there's a good chance you're gonna to wanna to be able to watch some things for entertainment. You're not gonna to wanna to be stuck just watching local cable or whatever, because chances are that's gonna be in Spanish and probably not a lot of content that you're interested in. It may be interesting, you may wanna check some of it out, but in general, you're probably gonna be pretty interested in streaming services, especially given that if you're coming from like the United States, that's what you're used to already. You would normally be watching streaming services that that's what you would continue to want to watch, right? So, so it's an excellent question, what is available? And in general, the answer is pretty easy. If you were just trying to use services in Nicaragua, the same as normal, the same as you would if you're in the United States, you have basically the same set of services. You've got Amazon Prime, you have Netflix, you have Pluto, you have um, HBO Max, you have um, Apple TV, all those things, whatever, uh, Disney Plus, all those things, if you have those services, you can use them here and they're more or less the same or similar. The content does change a little bit. Clive, Clive, hey, hey, what are you doing? Clive, no, no. He's rolling in something. <sighs> Dogs. And um, so you have, you have pretty much the same, the same services. What you will notice is that um, you know, Netflix has a different selection of things, but in some cases it's better, not necessarily worse, but it is different. So be aware that that's gonna be, you may not have the exact same access to shows. If they're Netflix originals, you'll have all of those. The same with Amazon Prime, you'll have all your originals, no problem. But if you're going to be uh, looking for their third party ones, well, those they have to license individually and you may or may not have the ones that you're looking for, the same ones that you're used to or whatever. But there's 
there's still a lot of selection. Um, with Amazon, it goes way down. Many of their third parties go away, but their first parties remain. Uh, if you're uh, looking at like a Disney Plus, they own their catalog. So whatever they have is going to, or should be available to you just the same. The one major streaming service that works differently or just goes away is Hulu. Hulu specifically does not allow its use in Nicaragua. So if they detect you in Nicaragua, not only will they not allow you to use the streaming service, they even block you from the websites to get customer service. So if you're an existing customer and you want to shut it off, they won't let you. They actually block you from turning off the service and they'll send you links no you have to go to this link and you go to that link and they'll say nope sorry you're not allowed to go to this link uh, so they have a, a thing and we've even spoken to them on the phone and their customer service was pretty blunt and said yeah our owners are racist and they're terrible and they don't want people in latin america to be able to cancel their service that was what they actually said on the phone and they said we hate working here ever since disney took over it's been terrible that was our cancellation experience with hulu in the past my dog is wandering away. Clive, come here. Come here. You can't go that way. No, you got to deal with me. Um, and uh, so in general, you're going to have a lot of selection for streaming. It won't be a problem unless you really specifically have a few things that you just have to see or if it's Hulu. Now, uh, what you um, can also do, and people will talk about this a lot, in many cases, you can use one of those VPN services. I hate those words. It is a VPN, but it's not a VPN as is used by the industry for decades. Uh, and with some of those services, which we do have, um, and most people do, uh, you can, in many cases, convince the service that you're located somewhere else, and so you can set it to be the US, and then you can get any streaming service you would have in the US. And you're a US customer, it, it pretty much they won't notice, right? In some cases, they'll detect it and be like, no, 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 you can't do that. Um, and then you just have to try again until it works. Um, but in general, they will work eventually. Uh, and almost everyone does that. And then you'd not only get anything you would have in the US or anything you would have in Nicaragua, uh, which overlap for the most part, but there are differences. Um, you can also switch to anywhere in the world and get whatever they would have, which starts to add up over time, right? It may be that Netflix US has Fuller House, but Netflix Nicaragua has Full House as well. Um, if you go to uh, Netflix Panama, maybe they have the Brady Bunch in addition to those, right? They pretty much will always have the Netflix originals, but if you bounce around, sometimes you'll find interesting third-party licenses that you otherwise wouldn't get, and it's because those places license that material for those countries, because they have no one else carrying it there, so it just makes sense for them. So, the moral of the story is, if you're coming to Nicaragua, bring your Apple TV device, bring your Kindle Fire, bring your Roku, bring your whatever, and it should work absolutely fine. Um, and if you have one that's able to run a VPN service, then that much better. Uh, you're going to um, be able to do, uh, do pretty much anything you, your heart desires. But the idea that you're not going to have streaming services here, not a thing. You have just all kinds of streaming options. And our internet here is excellent. That's the other part of that question. One is what do they block there? One is can you work around the block? So they block very little. Yes, you can work around pretty much any block. And at the end of the day, our internet in Nicaragua is excellent. So the ability to stream things from wherever is generally very, very good. You should have no problem doing any of that. And of course, YouTube should go without saying as I'm here creating YouTube content in Nicaragua. So thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Ask more questions, get down in the comments. What do you want to know about living in Nicaragua, traveling abroad, all those kinds of things, streaming services? What do I use? What do I watch? And uh, all of that share on social media, tell your friends about the show, support us with buying us a coffee, and I will see all of you tomorrow.